Good job. Uh, did anybody not get their ballot picked up? They're all in? Okie doke. Um, many of you might not know this, but this is the first church in the entire unity movement. It began uh, in 1900, incorporated in 1903. This is the 111th annual business meeting. Now, just think for a moment, 111 years ago, the people of this congregation gathered together down at Ninth and Tracy for a meeting very much like this. There weren't any telephones, there weren't any TVs, there weren't any radios. I suppose some of them rode horses to the, uh, to the church. But it's a totally different dynamic than what we have today. No internet. Yet here we are. We are the recipients of their legacy, and we come together to continue on with that same spirit and that same movement of improving our lives, increasing the well-being of not only ourselves, but collectively increasing the well-being of the world. Now, that being said, well-being is a big word around here, and I'd like to make a motion, since this is the annual business meeting, that is going to increase the well-being of many people I know. And that is the board meetings take place on the third Tuesday of every month, and that third Tuesday is this Tuesday. They usually last from 6 to 8 o'clock, and as you know, the World Series fits in there someplace. So I would like to make the motion, since we don't have any pressing business and no decisions to make, that the board meeting this Tuesday be canceled. If you approve, say aye. Aye. Motion carried. <laughs> yes. The uh, lesson today is on reaction, uh, negative reactions transforming to positive response. And oftentimes, our reactions are based on what we believe, and that works good. And, but if what we believe isn't true, then a problem arises, because we react in a way that is not aligned with the truth. Now, a perfect example of this is many years ago, my cousin Ozzy and I took a trip, a road trip, to the Black Hills of South Dakota. While we are going around the, uh, the Black Hills, my cousin Ozzy was driving, and there's a lot of sharp curves and turns, and the road goes all over the place, and we started to come around one very sharp curve. A woman came around from the other side. She is all over the road, almost ran into us. She stuck her head out the window and yelled at Ozzy, Hog! <laughs> well, in cases like that, Ozzy is not a gentleman, and he doesn't react in a positive, kind way. So he stuck his head out the window and he yelled, cow, you old cow. Well, we rounded the curve and ran into a hog. <laughs> we were reacting to something that we thought was true, but it wasn't true at all. Another thing I find interesting is the way people react when they engage in conversations about God. When I was in the seminary, the fellow classmates and myself, we would discuss God, and, and we all had our own opinions on who God was and what God did and where God was, and, and sometimes the, the debates would get pretty fired up. But as time has gone by, I've gotten to the point where when I hear other preachers talk about God, it really doesn't interest me. And when I make the determination to talk about God, I struggle with what to say because there's nothing to say about God. You know, to say something about anything, there has to be some sort of a, 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 a comparative narrative that goes on. There has to be something that we can define, and God is just one thing. There's nothing to compare it to. There's, there's no adjectives we can use to describe it. The only thing I can, I can say about God is just, is just four simple words. God is it all. There's nothing else to say. Now, it all began, as many of us know, 14 billion years ago with the Big Bang. There's absolutely nothing, just a void, and then all of a sudden, for hundreds of millions of miles in every direction, up and down, the sky was filled with a great, fiery blast. And it was all God. Not a single thing has been added to the universe since that time. Not a single thing has been taken away. It was like a giant crossword puzzle with all the pieces there that had to come together over time. So the little pieces began to congregate, and pretty soon there were stars, and then, then there were planets, and then there was the earth. The earth miraculously was able to help create oceans, which we can't find anyplace else in the universe. 
The ocean spawned life, another miracle in itself. First there's bacteria, then there's algae, then there's other plant forms, and pretty soon more sophisticated and complex life forms, and it all was God. Life continued to evolve and progress until at last the, the, the physical forms were pretty much in place, but the consciousness began to grow until life met its crowning glory of the human being. And for the first time in the history of existence, something was created that could reflect back on the creation. And it was all God. And then came you. You are born into this world. Your life began. As you grew up, family, friends, and other people in your environment began to impress upon you certain things to think and to believe. And when you hit the age of about two or three, they began to impose upon you certain ways to respond, proper ways to respond. I recently got back on, from a uh, seven-day trip uh, with my two-year-old grandson, and uh, that was quite an experience in itself, and I'm not going to go into it now. <laughs> but we're in the process of teaching him how to respond in a good, kind way. And one of the biggest difficulties that we've had is getting him to respond kindly to the word no. <laughs> simply, sim simply won't accept it. He does not respond to that. He sees that as an opportunity to overturn the verdict by screaming at the top of his lungs. And I must say that's a very successful method when you're on a plane with 220 people. <clears throat> I got to the point where I gave him whatever he wanted. He wanted the hat on the head of the lady in front of us. Go for it, kid. <laughs> Anyways, we grew up, and these responses that were impressed upon us continued to become more and more rooted in us, and pretty soon they became reactions. Now, the difference between a response and a reaction is a response has some contemplation to it. It has some thought to it. We just take a moment to pause and think, what is the response that's going to get me the most positive result in this situation? And after we practice a response so often, it becomes a reaction. We don't have to think about it anymore. It becomes automatic. It becomes a habit of thought. Now, many of us were raised in environments that impose on us responses that probably weren't um, the best way to respond to something. When I was growing up, my uh, good friend Joey Giovanni um, had a very different household than, than my very subdued, almost suppressed Norwegian background. And I'd go over to Joey Di uh, Giovanni's house, and it's like everybody was yelling. The brother was yelling at sister, and sister was yelling at the dog, and the dog was barking at the cat. And then dad would yell out to his wife, Rose, Rose, tell those kids to quit yelling at each other. And Rose in the kitchen would yell out, kids, quit yelling at each other. Then the sister would yell, you're supposed to quit yelling, mom says. And the brother says, you quit. Everybody was shouting and yelling. And that's just the way they responded to stuff that they didn't like. They shouted it out. And Joey Didrani continued that. He's probably still shouting today. I don't know. <laughs> but the, the, the point that I'm trying to make is, our responses turn into reactions, and when our reactions aren't based on truth or they don't have a positive result for us, we have the power, we have the, 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 the opportunity, the capacity to change those reactions. And we do that exactly the same way that we did in the beginning. We practice a new response, and with repetition, pretty soon that response becomes a reaction that has a positive benefit for us. So we were talking about God earlier. <clears throat> you are the result of 14 billion years of uninterrupted, continuous evolution. God has never missed a single step along the way. When, when a species was endangered and its survival was threatened, a mutation of some sort would take place within that species and give it something it never had before, give it something new to increase the odds of its survival. God has this thing covered. God has been doing this all along, 
And now here we are in the midst of it, and we're not just here as visitors to the planet Earth. I mean, we didn't, we didn't come to Earth. We were born out of the Earth. The Earth gave birth to us. Everything that, that is the essence of our being was there at the Big Bang, and it came forth from the Earth. We're of the Earth. We're a part of the universe. And it's only when we claim that and, and don't fall into the trap of disconnection or, or being, being alone and singular in this world, but a part of the whole that we can truly fulfill our purpose, which is to be a participant in the evolution, because it hasn't stopped yet. This isn't the end. And to participate in the evolution is to do whatever we can to increase the peace and the harmony and the love in the world. That's our job. We, we're greatly rewarded by it because we get to experience those three great things. Now, the single point that I'm trying to make in this is that evolution has been going on for 14 billion years. We are the end result of that so far. We have the capacity to do whatever we want for the first time in the history of existence. Once again, we can plan or we can be the architects of our future. We don't just have to be, be the, the product of evolution. We can design our own evolution. How do I want to be next week? How do I want to be next year? How do I want to live my life? I can evolve to higher levels of consciousness. But what that takes, first and foremost, is one simple word, and that is trust. The greatest negativity we experience in our world is fear. And I'm not talking about fear for survival or fear for the safety of loved ones. I'm talking about fear and worry and anxiety about what is going on. We're afraid of life a lot of the times. Life becomes the enemy. But it is all God. And we move into that and say, I'm a part of this, participating in the evolution of it, and not apart from it, but a part of it. Then all that fear goes away. We discover that the struggles have a purpose and a meaning, and they're leading us to someplace good. We discover that the loved ones we have that are going through very difficult times, whether it's with addiction or, or divorce or whatever, that they will go through that, and they will merge into the light, and their life will be okay. We have to understand that when the dark clouds cover the sky, that this too shall pass, and the light will come again. There's no reason to fear. There's no reason to worry. There's no reason to be anxious about any of it. There's only reason to step into it and say, I'm a part of this, and I'm going to do my part. So as we take that into meditation, think about you and your life. What would you like to change? Are there fears and worries that bother you, that drag you down, that are heavy burdens? What if you let them go? What would happen? And once more, think about the life up to this point, all the things you've worried about, all the fears you've had. Perhaps it's not being accepted by others. Perhaps you're afraid of what might happen next. Perhaps it's afraid that you couldn't overcome an obstacle or a challenge that was facing you. All of those things you've worried about, yet here you are, doing well. We'll now move into meditation.
But in this moment, we settle into a place of quiet, a place of calm, a place of peace. At this moment, right here, right now, this moment, in time is being shared with every single living thing in the planet. We are all sharing the same moment. We're all part of the same life dynamic. It all is God. And we are a part of that. Although the great mystery hides from me many of the answers I seek, I trust in God. Although the path of life is filled with hills and valleys, and sometimes I don't know where my strength is going to come from, I trust in God. Each and every one of us is a piece of the great puzzle of life. And without that peace, life would be incomplete. We have our part to play, and we affirm that we go forth to play it well. On this day, we dedicate ourselves to peace on earth. 